Hi, and welcome back to Ask DRTK. And today we're going to take a look at a dynamic USB microphone from Fine Fine. It's the K658 released this year. Let's check it out. Fine Fine has provided this microphone to me for the review, but I haven't received any other compensation. The tests, comparisons, and opinions I'm giving you here are my own, and Fine Fine will see this review at the same time as you. I've been testing the K658 for a while now, but for this review, I'll go ahead and turn back the clock. I'll unbox the microphone for you. I'll go through some features and specifications. Then we'll get into some audio tests with unprocessed audio, both on the boom arm as well as the included desk stand. Then I'll get into some microphone comparisons, followed by some physical tests, plosives, handling noise, off-axis rejection. Then I'll get into a process demonstration with some free plugins. I'll build a process chain for this mic. And finally, I'll give you my recommendations and thoughts. So let's go ahead and unbox the K658. Comes in a nice quality package here. I'll go ahead and slide the outer sleeve off. Then we have the box itself. And as I say, it is very solid. So that's going to protect the microphone on its way to you. I'll just slit the uh, seals open on the back. So you know the first person into this package. And now that I've removed the top cover, we can see inside the box, we get a nice uh, set of instructions. Looks like it has some full color images to reference, so it uh, looks pretty good. Now we'll slide the box off to the side. In it we get a uh, shock mount, and it is uh, plastic, but it does have a brass sleeve inside the, uh, the thread, so that's good to see. Then there's a, a nut for the bottom of the microphone, that's to attach the microphone to the shock mount. We get a nice USB cable, it's USB A to C, USB C on the side of the mic. You can use a USB C to C cable with this microphone, but it's not included. Then we'll look at the accessories. And so for accessories, we get a 3 8 to 5 8 adapter, which is uh, great to have. It'll fit whatever boom armor stand you like. And they include a tripod style desk mount stand. So that's really good to get you going. Boom arm is really the way to go if you can, but uh, certainly great. Also nice for a portable option. Then we have the microphone itself. Uh, it's really lightweight, uh, has that broadcast dynamic look. You get a control on the one side for gain, uh, mute switch, as well as a switch to uh, turn the RGB off and on. We get USB-C on the bottom and a headphone monitoring jack. The windscreen actually threads off, which I didn't realize at the time of unboxing here. So uh, just so you know, it can be removed. The Fine Fine K658 is a dynamic microphone with a USB interface. And I have to say that the majority of USB microphones I've seen have been a condenser style. So it's nice to see Fine Fine come out with a dynamic offering here. Now again, it's a USB microphone. It has a USB-C connection on the bottom. Comes with a USB-C to A cable, although you can use a C to C cable if you like. It has a cardioid polar pattern with a frequency response of 70 to 15,000 hertz. And again, that response range is about what I'd expect for a dynamic microphone. The signal to noise ratio is greater than 70 decibels. So again, that's pretty good for a microphone in this price category. Maximum SPL of 110 dB with equivalent noise of negative 77 dB. This microphone has RGB lighting and it's on off selectable, but it doesn't allow you to choose the color or pattern. So it's just a rainbow pattern. That's what you're going to get here. Now it uses USB power and it's going to draw between 55 and 180 milliamps, depending on how far you have the gain turned up, as well as whether you're using RGB lighting. Now all of the audio in this review will be done without processing unless I tell you otherwise. I right now have the microphone connected up with USB into my computer and the gain set about halfway. This is the sound you're getting. And now I've reduced the gain on the microphone to about 25% but I've added 10 dB of gain in OBS. And the idea here is just without processing try to reduce some of the background noise from the computer fan. I'll be silent now so you can listen. And now I've turned the microphone up to about 65%, and that's to get a lot of really good signal coming in. Now I've also turned on RN noise reduction in OBS Studio just to get rid of some of that background noise from computer fans. I'll be silent for a moment so you can hear. And of course that cleans up the background noise right away. And the idea is before I get into a lot of detail tests, just to give you an idea of a basic starting point, where you could get set up to use this microphone for streaming. And now I've returned the microphone to about 50% gain, and I've turned off boost in OBS, so we're at no external boost. 
and I've also turned off RN noise, so there's no processing going on here either. And that's what I'm going to keep it as for the rest of this review, unless I tell you otherwise. Now, I'm using the microphone on a boom arm right now, and that's the application Fine Fine is really recommending that we use this mic on. But they do include a desk stand. And they tell me the idea is to get you going or to give you something for portable use if you need that. So we'll go ahead and test it out on the desk stand with a few different gain settings to give you an idea of what you can expect in that configuration. And so now I have the Fine Fine K658 mounted on the included desktop stand about 16 inches away from my mouth. And I have the gain turned up about halfway, but I'm adding 10 dB of boost in OBS. And I can hear it picking up the background noise from the computer fan and my monitoring. I'll be silent so you can listen. And I can definitely hear it in the background. It's showing at about negative 55 dB on the levels. So now I'll go ahead and I'll increase the gain on the microphone to about 75% and we'll lower the boost in OBS. And now I have the microphone set at about 75% gain. I'm using 3 dB of additional boost in OBS Studio. And so I want you to hear what the background noise is when I'm silent. And from my monitoring, it definitely is picking up the uh, fan noise from the computer, although I am getting much better signal from my voice. And now I've turned on RN Noise in OBS Studio to help clean up that background noise from the computer fans. I still have the gain set at 75% on the microphone and a 3 dB boost in OBS. Now I'll be silent and let you hear. And so in the desk mount application, you're definitely going to pick up some room noise, definitely reverberation going on, and that'll depend on the room that you're in. Also, having to turn the gain up a little bit higher, you can also pick up quite a bit more background noise. So it's not the ideal situation. As you heard with the RN noise applied, it really cleaned up a lot of that background sound. So I'd probably recommend using it that way if you have to use the desk stand. But really, the boom is the ideal way to use the mic if you can. Really, any microphone, the closer you get it to your mouth, the better it's going to perform. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the physical characteristics of this microphone. So I've been using it at a working distance of about six inches off the microphone, and that's typically where I'll set up microphones on a boom arm. But to, to give you an idea, if you get in closer, this will give you the proximity effect, and you can see that if you do get right up on the microphone, it definitely will give you the proximity effect. But anywhere around six inches or so where I am now to about eight inches is usually where I would use it. I'll back up a little bit. This is at about a foot away. And I'm actually going to turn the microphone to face a little more. So I'll face this way and I'll back up here to about 18 inches away from the microphone. So at 18 inches, this is the sound you're going to get. And I'll finally back up to about two feet. And this is really the limit at which you would want to use a dynamic microphone of this style anyways. And so just again to give you an idea at that distance. And now we'll test the plosives on this microphone. People, people, because, because. And yeah, definitely that is picking up plosives. I mean, we do have a windscreen here, but I mean, the issue is it's getting through. Now we use a pop filter. People, people, because, because. And yeah, that definitely cleaned that right up. So, I mean, if you're going to need to speak loudly directly into the microphone, you're probably going to want to use a pop filter. But for most uses, the way I have it set up here, kind of pointing across my mouth, off axis, distance of about six to eight inches is going to work well for you. Now let's go ahead and check out the handling noise and off-axis rejection. So starting out looking into the front of the microphone, this is the sound we get. Now I've turned it to 90 degrees. This is the sound again. Turning to 180 degrees to the microphone, this is the sound I'm getting. And finally the other 90 degrees, this is the sound we get. Now I'm sure you could hear the handling noise as I was testing the off-axis performance and definitely this microphone does pick up sound so and as I'm tapping the boom arm you definitely can hear the pickup on the microphone. It does have a shock mount but you just have to be aware that if you're going to be moving the microphone around, moving the boom arm around, you are going to pick up noise with it so just uh, do be aware of that. As far as the polar pattern, I can tell you that it definitely performed like a cardioid. We had that pickup in the front of the microphone with less to the sides and less around the back. 
so I would say that it did perform as a cardioid pattern should. And as I rotated the microphone, pretty much the only sound you could hear was general room noise being picked up. So really it did a great job of rejecting to the sides in the back. Now uh, quickly uh, doing a test here with background rejection. So typing away on a keyboard, and this will give you an idea of how much it picks up in the background. And again, I can hear that in the background. Uh, we'll talk about uh, you know filtering later on in terms of noise reduction and how you might use this for streaming. But uh, the microphone itself is going to pick up keyboard noise if you're typing near to, uh, near to the mic. And because this microphone does have controls, we'll go ahead and see what those are all about. So the uh, gain control, again, I've got it right in the middle here at about 50%. As I turn it down, now I'm getting down to about 25%. And uh, all the way down to the bottom here, that's the uh, least amount of gain uh, that we can have. And then rotating it back up through that all the way up above. And now we're getting to about 75% of gain here. And finally up to maximum gain. And so that'll give you an idea of what we have there. Turn it back down to the middle. And about 50% gain again is where I've been using it so far. It also has a mute button. And it's a capacitive mute button, which is nice. Again, as I'm talking, I'll keep talking. Now I'll turn it back on. And then as far as the RGB, it has a capacitive button on the bottom to turn the RGB off and on. So on and off. And as I said earlier, that's the selection for RGB. You can't change the colors or the patterns. And now we'll get into some microphone comparisons. So this time we have the Fine Fine K658 versus the Zoom ZDM1. Now the Fine Fine microphone's available for just over 100 US dollars, about 120 US dollars at the time of recording. And uh, the Zoom ZDM1 is available for about 50 US dollars. But remember, the Fine Fine is a USB microphone. The Zoom, you actually are going to need an XLR interface. And so I thought, well, if you had the ZDM1 and you were to add up an inexpensive interface like an M Track Solo for, uh, in a cable for about the same price, these would be a really good comparison. So we're starting out on the Fine Fine K658. This is, of course, the sound you've been listening to throughout this review. I have the gain set about halfway up. There's no processing applied to the mic. This is what it sounds like. Now let's uh, listen to the uh, Zoom offering. And now you're listening to me on the Zoom ZDM1. I have it connected directly up to my Focusrite Scarlett 8i6 with the gain set at three o'clock. There's no processing applied to the microphone. This is what it sounds like out of the box. And so a comparison of this microphone versus the Fine Fine K658. And now that you've heard me on both of these microphones, can you tell which one I'm speaking on? Check the upper corner to find out. Next up, we'll compare the Fine Fine K658 against the Rode Pod mic. So starting out here, of course, on the Fine Fine, I haven't made any changes. It's still set at a gain of about 50%, no processing. Now we'll switch over to the Rode Pod mic and uh, let's hear how it sounds. And now I've switched over to the Rode Pod mic. This microphone actually sells for about the same price as the Fine Fine microphone, except it also requires an audio interface, so you need to keep it in mind. Today I have it hooked up to the Scarlett 8i6. I have the gain set at about 330, just to balance the level off as much as possible to what I'm getting out of the K658. This is how it sounds. Again, no processing. Compare the two microphones. And now that you've heard me speaking on both the Fine Fine K658 and the Rode Pod mic, can you tell which one I'm on here? Check the upper corner to find out. Okay, and the next test, we're going to have the Fine Fine K658 versus the Audio-Technica AT2040. The AT2040 is another broadcast dynamic microphone in that 100 US dollar price range. Again, with an interface, this will put it up more expensive than the Fine Fine. But of course, here we are starting out on the Fine Fine K658. I have it again set with the gain around 50%. No changes made here, no processing. Let, uh, let me switch it over now and we'll listen to the AT2040. And now you're listening to me on the Audio-Technica AT2040. I have this connected directly to the Scarlett 8i6, gain set at about three o'clock again, no processing, so that you can get an idea of this microphone versus the Fine Fine K658 out of the box. And once again, now that you've heard me on the Fine Fine K658 and the Audio-Technica AT2040, can you tell the difference? Check the upper corner to find out. Next comparison, we have the Fine Fine K658 versus the Shure MV7X, a relatively new broadcast dynamic microphone that Shure has come out with. 
a variant on the original MV7 without USB built in. So of course we're starting out here again. I'm on the Fine Fine K658 and I have no changes made to this. The gain's about 50% without processing. Now I'll switch over to the MV7X for you. And this is the Shure MV7X. I have it connected into my Scarlet 8i6. Again, gain set at around three o'clock here. No processing applied. And so you can get an idea of what this microphone is like compared to the Fine Fine K658. The Shure microphone, of course, is about double the price, maybe a little bit less than double the price of the Fine Fine, and it requires an interface. So listen to the difference in the sound. Is one better for you? Let's find out if you can tell the difference. And again, since you've been listening to me on the Fine Fine K658 and the Shure MV7X, can you tell the difference? Check the upper corner and let me know in the comments below. And I thought it'd be interesting to include a comparison with a handheld dynamic microphone that when paired with an inexpensive audio interface could actually be less expensive than the Fine Fine K658. So here we have the K658 versus the Behringer XM8500. And of course, I'm starting out here on the Fine Fine K658. Uh, gain right at 50%, no processing. Now I'll switch over to the XM8500. And now you're listening to me on the Behringer XM8500 handheld dynamic microphone. This microphone can be had for anywhere between 25 and 40 US dollars, depending on the time and if it's on sale. So uh, less expensive than the Fine Fine. Now, if we were to add up an inexpensive audio interface, again, perhaps like an M-Track Solo and an XLR cable, we might even be a little bit less expensive than the Fine Fine microphone. And so I thought it'd be really useful to include it. I have the XM8500 hooked up directly to my Scarlet 8i6. I have the gain set at about three o'clock here. And so this is the unprocessed sound you get out of the XM8500. And now that you've listened to me on both the XM8500 and the K658, can you tell the difference? Check the upper corner to find out if you got it right. And for the final comparison, we have the Fine Fine K658 versus the Shure SM7B. And of course, I'm starting out here on the K658 with the gain set about 50%, this USB microphone directly into the computer with no processing. Now we'll go ahead and switch over to the SM7B. And now you're listening to me on the Shure SM7B. I have it connected directly into my Scarlet 8i6. I have the gain set at 415. No mic booster for this comparison. And so this is the sound of the SM7B, a microphone that's about four and a half times the price of the Fine Fine K658. And you need an interface and possibly a mic booster with this. So considerably more expensive. This is what it sounds like. And once again, now that you've been listening to me on both the K658 and the SM7B, can you tell the difference? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, check the upper corner to find out which microphone I'm speaking on now. And now that we've done the microphone comparisons, what I'd like to do is a process demonstration. So I'm going to set up some plugins here to give you an idea of what you might do to use this microphone for streaming or for recording. Okay, and now you're listening to processed audio with the Fine Fine K658. And I'll just go through what I've applied to the microphone here. I started out with noise suppression and just using the built-in RN noise within OBS Studio. Certainly for those of you with a, an NVIDIA RTX card, if you uh, have a 20 series or 30 series, you can go ahead and use that as an option. I've just switched over to that now so you get an idea of what it's like. I'll leave it on RN noise for this demonstration. Then uh, gain I have here, but I do have nothing. So as you know, the, the processing and the unprocessed audio through this uh, review has been with a gain at 50% and I haven't been boosting at all. Then uh, we get to TDR Nova and that's what I have set up here. And what I've done is I've just added a high pass filter here with a 6 dB roll off starting at about 52 Hertz. So just to take anything out, this microphone response is supposed to be of 70, above 70 Hertz rather. But I mean, there's always something below. So I just wanted to roll that off. There really isn't a lot of useful information for my voice there. And then I've cut out a few resonance frequencies just to uh, control a little bit of the sound in my room, as well as adding a little bit of a uh, cut here up in the 7K range just for de purposes. And uh, then the next thing I have is Slick EQ. And I'm using this just for a general tone of the microphone, a little bit of boost here in the low range. Again, I have a bell set up at actually 115, but because of the, of the high pass filter roll off, I'm not gonna get anything below that. I've scooped out a little bit of the mids again, just to control some of the unpleasant frequencies in my voice. 
And uh, then I've added a little bit of presence up at 5K with a 2.8 uh, dB boost. And uh, finally, I've used just the stock compressor here. I'm compressing it three and a half to one, uh, starting off with a threshold around uh, negative 16. And I've got a really fast attack here and a fast release. Uh, no output gain here. There's a very little reduction going on. And finally, I've added an expander as well. And what this is going to do is attenuate any noise below minus 36 dB. So pretty much anything that is uh, going to be unwanted, non-vocal, is going to be attenuated at a ratio of three and a half to one. So think of this as a very soft gate. And again, I've got a fast attack and release going on here. No output gain built up. And again, this is only one way to process the audio. I wanted to just show you how using free tools, you could control the background noise, enhance the sound of the microphone a little bit, customize it to your voice. And for those of you wanting a really big kind of broadcast FM sound, I made a few tweaks to the processing chain. So let's take a look at those. And so here we are. And really all I've done is gone into Slick EQ. I've increased the boost here up to 4.8 at the same 115 hertz bell. I've scooped a little bit more out from the 2K range. And I've also backed off the gain to 1.5 dB, as well as moving the center of that frequency down to 4 hertz. And so here you're getting a lot deeper, kind of a broadcast FM sort of sound. So if that's what you're looking for, again, the Fine Fine K658 will give you that. A little bit of processing with some free plugins, and uh, you'll get the sound you're looking for. And again, this process demonstration is just to give you an idea of what you could do with free tools with this microphone. Just to enhance the tone of the mic, tailor a little bit to your voice as well as the room, as well as to get rid of any background noise kind of to attenuate that out. So if you're using it for recording or streaming in a less than ideal situation, with a few free plugins, you can really do a lot to set this microphone up in the pocket to use for your recordings. And now that I've had a chance to test the microphone out and compare it to a few others, I'll give you my final thoughts. First of all, I have to say that I think the, uh, the pickup, the vocal clarity from this microphone in this price point is actually very good. Uh, nice to have a dynamic microphone with a USB uh, form factor. I think that uh, makes it very convenient for a lot of you that aren't uh, interested in really doing anything much with upgrading audio down the road, needing an XLR or an audio interface. So uh, I'm really happy with that. I will say uh, that I did find it to actually pick up a fair amount of the room noise and background noise compared to some of the other dynamic mics that I have. Now that can easily be cleaned up with a noise reduction plug-in and uh, that's why I wanted to show you that in the process demonstration. But out of the box, just understand that it is going to pick up keyboard noise, other background noise in the room. And, uh, and so uh, you just, just to be aware that uh, you'll probably want to uh, use a plug-in to help clean that up. But overall, I would say the audio performance was very good. The uh, handling noise, I felt it did make quite a bit of noise. So if you're going to uh, move the boomer arm around a lot, that may be an issue for you. So uh, you want to you wanna consider that as well if, if this is the mic. The uh, RGB lighting is something if you uh, like it, if it fits in with the aesthetic, uh, nice to have on here, but uh, certainly uh, not, uh, not anything required from an audio point of view. I didn't notice any difference, any interference or anything when I turned the RGB off and on. So at least that was good to see here. Obviously, the form factor definitely has the look, the broadcast dynamic look. Uh, you know, if you want to have the control more or less invisible, you can rotate this. So then it'll just kind of give you that very simple cylindrical dynamic microphone or broadcast microphone look. Um, but overall, I have to say, I think for the price point that this microphone's in, just over 100 US dollars at the time of recording, I think there's good value here. And uh, th this uh, is likely going to be a good fit for a number of you. And so overall, if you're looking for a broadcast dynamic microphone with a USB interface, you want kind of a simplified situation where you don't have to use interfaces, really cut down on the complexity of your setup, I would have to give this microphone a thumbs up. I think it does a good job in this price point. A little bit of work to clean up the background noise with uh, plugins and uh, maybe a little bit of EQ and compression, and you're good to go with your stream or recording. Now, I'm always interested to try out new gear for your project studio, recordings, or streaming. So whether it's audio or video, streaming tutorials, if those are things you're interested in, check out one of the videos on the screen. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.